Okay, it looks like we're in focus there. Uh, yeah. All right. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> okay, we're uh, going to talk about one more very simple piece of test equipment. Um, probably the most simplest basic. Uh, we, I talked last time uh, about this circuit using a 12BE6 as a mixer and a pair of TCXOs, temperature compensated oscillators. Uh, but if you don't have them and you're in need of a signal source to either tune up a coil or um, when you get your receiver done you want to dial it in you're going to need a fairly strong local signal uh, so that the receiver can pick it up and then you can do your peaking on the antenna input and plate tune on the receiver uh, to bring the, st the station in as long as loud as you can. Um, but what this is, it's a Hartley oscillator circuit. I'm using a 12BE6 just because it makes it simple. The filaments are 12 volt. And yes, this circuit again, it runs on 12 volt. I'll show you right here. <clears throat> this little green lead is where I have my filament and plate voltage hooked up to. 12.38. That's what it's running on. The frequency counter here is picking up the output of it. And I can turn my the ham radio on here. Right there. Now this is real unstable, but it's just a, a quick to put together oscillator. It's not meant to be real drift free. But see, you can tune. See how that changes the frequency there. What I try to do is dial it for 7.2 on the 40 meter band. 7.2 megacycles is about the center and it's just an easy one to come back to and find uh, when you're doing your initial tuning. Okay, we'll talk about how this little circuit is uh, was put together. Let me unhook everything here. Turn that off. Unsolder the wire. Printer woke up because I turned the 120 on. <laughs> okay, set this all out of the way. Okay, the schematic for this, very simple, straightforward. The little coil I've got right here is tapped, and on the schematic I've got the dimensions for it. Now on this one it's 50 turns, 30 gauge wire. I'm using a quarter inch tune slug, but um, as recently, uh, about a week or so ago, I was emailing with a gentleman in France, and he alerted me to the fact that these coil forms aren't easy to find. So I decided to try what else would work. Right there, a soda straw from AMPM, <laughs> out of their drinks. That will work. And I've made, uh, if I can grab it here quick. Uh, yeah. Okay. There would be a coil made on a soda straw. Just that simple. It's 50 turns of wire. Uh, what it is, you start from one end, you count 11 turns, 
and then make a tap that's this you start here make 11 turns you make a wire coming out and you uh, scrape that tin it and then your other wire just goes back to that and continues on and winds the same direction on that and so there it is wound on a soda straw 50 turns tapped 11 in, 11 turns from the ground and even though the dimension on this is slightly larger uh, it comes out real close a uh, quarter inch here and I think the soda straw I measured it and it was seven millimeters it's close enough um, just if you got a variable tuner that there'd be hardly enough difference to where you could uh, move it and, and tell the difference from the eye uh, you know a 64th of a of a turn uh, just a slight increment in tuning would for the difference and if you have a receiver handy you can dial it in um, if it's way off if you start with 39 picofarad that's the little cap to ground that pads the coil you might add another 10 or 15 um, until you find it on your ham radio or your shortwave receiver and just keep adjusting that either up or down until you get it to uh, right around 7.2 megacycles okay uh, yes I'm showing the short people out there are going to catch me on this um, I'm using a 12 BE6 but this circuit or the uh, tube dimension here the drawing is actually for like a 6BH6 and on the 12BE6 the same pins are in use except for pin 7 and we usually ground pin 7 anyhow on the other tubes so that pin 7 is ignored and on pin 7 on the BE6 it's actually the signal grid the signal injection grid but all we're concerned with is the cathode uh, pin 2 and the control grid pin 1 and of course the screen pin 6 and the plate pin 5 are exactly the same as the 12 BE6 this makes up what's called a Hartley oscillator your tuner, the trimmer, the variable condenser right here is that the little this capacitor here limits the amount of travel like if you have a too big of one and it moves too fast I have a 22 picofarad one in there you could go down to a 10 or even a 5 depending on where your circuits at uh, like freestanding um, wherever it uh, would want to just normally sit at whatever frequency um, what that does it limits the amount of travel see I've got a 10 to 140 right here but maybe it only needs another uh, 15 picofarad so you could limit it with this here it actually it's kinda like a how would you see uh, I guess you can kind of think of it as a gear reducer it slows the tuning down um, and the smaller the number here the more you can the farther you can turn this tuner and get a small effect on your frequency um, this coil that I used originally is has a tuned slug you don't have to have that that's why I actually tried this with a soda straw and you don't need the slug it'll work without it okay um, on the receiver when we get to that point here is your actual circuit this is why I actually like would like to go ahead and use the 12 BE6 this is the actual local oscillator for the little 40 meter shortwave receiver same circuit hookup cathode to the tap then your ground the top of the coil 
goes to a uh, an isolation cap. This keeps your grid voltage from being shorted to ground. That's all that's for. And then the 82K resistor sets the bias for the, the control grid. Everything else is going to hook up the same. On this circuit, I have just used an RF choke. It's 250 microhenry RF choke. You could, if you wanted to, take and wind a coil. Uh, in this particular case, it would be like we've been talking about 35 turns and somewhere around 88 picofarad across that coil. And that would be considering that you would just have a, a coil on a form without a slug to adjust it. Um, but if you wanted to, you could take this choke out, put a coil across there, and then you could try different capacitances across there. But this is, this, the idea of this circuit is just to provide a signal. Uh, I went ahead and drew the little RF probe on here. <clears throat> so if you wanted to try that, uh, you'd probably need to mount it on a somewhat different mounting than I've got here. Because you would need room, if you had it, to mount another one of these uh, trimmer capacitors. See how that works. You need to. You would need to mount another one up above, or close here to where you could put a capacitor across that coil if you wanted to use that to tune it up with. I have one more uh, device that uh, I will show, and then we'll we'll go ahead and get on with the build. But I thought before we started, it probably would be handy uh, to have some pieces of test equipment and uh, to get you going and if you wanted to just try the circuit by itself 12 volts runs on the same as the filament voltage as the uh, 12 volt uh, it just makes it simple if you didn't have a 12 BE6 you could use a tube like a 12AU6 or a 12BA6. The only difference is that you'll have to make a change. They have these pins swapped. Pin 7 on the AU6 is the cathode. <clears throat> and the suppressor grid is pin 2, so you'd have to make that change. Everything else is going to run the same. And of course if you use a 12AU6 the 12, you know, that's your filament voltage. So it's the same filament pins, pin 3 and 4, and just hooks to your 12 volt line going in. And it will work just exactly the same as the uh, the 12 BE6 in this circuit. So if you don't have a 12 BE6, you could, like I said, you could try a 12 AU6 or a 12 BA6. Either one will work just nicely and that'll get you, uh, you can try different turns if you have a slightly bigger diameter and you can't get the frequency down. Uh, you could go down to like 45 turns maybe. Uh, it depends on where your frequency is at. Uh, if, you're, if this is, ends up too low, uh, too high, you'd want to add turns of course. Make it uh, 60 turns. The tap <clears throat> could stay the same, um, roughly 11 turns from the bottom would be fine, <clears throat> even if you went up to 60 turns on the coil. Okay, um, let's see, next, what's coming next? I'll give you a preview, I think, do I have it? Maybe I didn't get it printed out. Hmm. Oh, my bad. I thought I printed it out there. 
Okay, well. Huh. Ah, okay. I just covered it up with another book. Okay, coming up next video, we'll talk about this circuit. It starts out using the same oscillator. Uh, this is what we're going to be looking at. It uses two tubes. A little bit more complicated underneath. But this little guy, here's the good part, it can also be a tube tester. So, until then, if you'd like any of these schematics, <clears throat> let me know. There's my email address. And I will uh, email you the latest additions I've got. And if you haven't got the uh, receiver schematic, you can request that. And I'd be happy to send it out there for you. All right. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.